Alright, so the team, this is a speedy version because I forgot to record because I had issues. Uh, let's see, from there, you can skip that. You can order Camp Tecumseh t-shirts, they're on the page, go clicky clicky, and then hit the little order form that is from the Camp Tecumseh page, and then order form, it is due Monday, hence the saying due Monday, all around it, print off order form. $25 for a hoodie, $10 for a t-shirt, or $30 for them both. That is what the design looks like, and it's going to be like some kind of baby blue or new North Carolina blue. Anyway, it's like the same color as the Greek mythology sheet. Or like the picture, word box. Picture. Maybe. There you go. And so from here, as we guys said, it was uh, Atlas, and what's Atlas holding on his back? COVID. COVID. And the idea was it's supposed to be the idea of like doctors trying to save the earth because of COVID. But when I saw it, I was like, oh, Greek mythology. So I got all excited. All right. Yesterday's stories. Mm -hmm. So from here, if you don't remember stuff, there are questions from this story on the quiz. But to help you out, you Mr. can find all of the stuff on there. You can just go clicky clicky and go if you don't remember what things are called, use the handout. So I'm just showing you again where a handout is. There are going to be two questions that come from those stories that we did not read. It is up to you. If you don't want to read them, don't read them. That's fine with me. If you want to wait till tomorrow to read them, that's fine with me too. I'm just giving you a heads up that there's going to be two questions on there. If you'd rather guess, more power to you. I just figured I'd tell you guys as much as I could. There's the punishments. There's going to be something from the Dionides, Tantalus, Ixion, and Sisyphus on there. Miles? The ones that you said not on their mind at all? Uh-huh. And then today... I should be able to finish today's story, but for some reason, if I don't, if we melt down and have issues yelling at each other, I did put today's story on there if we don't finish. But I really don't want to give you reading homework two days in a row, so I'm going to try to make sure we get through them. So, let's get to today's fun story. Let's adjust this camera. Here we go. So, before we get to our first story about Phaethon, I have to talk about Apollo. The dude that is right over yonder, this Apollo, the one that was the sun god, or the okay. sun, the sun, and hotties. sun and hotties. So here's how they believed his job worked. There was a mountain that was way on the east side of the world, and a mountain on the west side of the world, and he had a giant castle up on the east one. And every morning, he would bring out his giant fire chariot. Some stories said that it was fire wheels. I've seen some that said the horses were on fire. Some said they had a helmet that was on fire, but something with fire. And what he would do is then take chariot across the sky from one side to the other, and that's what you would see as the sun went across the sky from one side to the other. But as he went across the sky, there were monsters up there that he had to worry about. There was like a giant scorpion and a bull and a lion and centaur but you guys know those monsters as constellations. yeah either constellations or the um, uh, yeah horoscope signs and so they thought they were actual monsters that were up there that he had to worry about evening time he would land on the mountain on the other side of the world take off the helmet or the burning horses or whatever it was come down to the bottom then there was a boat waiting for him down there at the bottom he would get on the boat and then go across, what was the ocean in the middle of the world? Water. Mediterranean, Mediterranean Sea. He would get and go across the Mediterranean Sea till the next morning, and then it would start all over again. That was his full-time job, day after day after day. And I've had kids ask, why not just put another castle over there and spend the night, as opposed to going back and forth? Solid question. Well, Serena? Because the sun doesn't rise on that side. Yeah, nah. because the sun only goes one direction. Uh, not the band. But so it doesn't go back and forth where it goes Monday, Tuesday, Monday, Wednesday, Wednesday Thursday. Thursday. And so they had to figure out a reason why it always went the same direction every time. So that was their thinking behind it. Problem is, this took up all of Apollo's time. And he didn't like that because he wanted to be able to do the thing he enjoyed more which was flirting with women because he was incredibly attractive. So he decides to retire from that job and step down from it. He's like, I no longer want to drive the sun chariot. It is eating into my time to flirt with women. So he retires from it and instead has another god step up into it. 
And so he hires a guy by the name of Helios, who is just this other titan who was out there. Another full god. He was just one of the many random gods that was out there named Rando God. And random god, he goes, hey, Helios, how would you like to get to be the guy that drives the sun chariot? And Helios is excited. He's like, that, that's great. He's like, right now I'm just a random guy, but I get to drive the sun chariot every day and become the sun god? He goes, yes. And Helios goes, done. Problem is, Helios had a family. He would have a human family that he was shape-shifting into a human and kept spending time with all of these humans. He had a human wife, a son, and daughters, and he had to abandon them to take on this job. And that brings us to today's story of Phaethon. So Phaethon was Helios' son, but he never knew his dad because his dad left when he was really, really young. Whenever he would go ask his mom, he was like, Mom, where's dad? I've not seen him. She was like, well, he went out to get milk and just hasn't come back for a long time. And so that became the issue. For him. So there are these things at school called bullies. And they would make fun of faith in And they were like, why has your dad come back with that milk yet? And they would harass him nonstop, which made him feel really sad because these bullies would always yell at him. So faith in one day goes home and talks to his mom. He's like, mom, the bullies at school are a bunch of big, mean, mean, jerky faces. And they keep making fun of me about the whole thing about not knowing where Dad is. So, can you tell me more about Dad? Do you know anything besides the fact that he went out to get milk one day? And she goes, yes. Yes, I do. She goes, actually, I know exactly who your father is, and I know where your father is. Ashton? I feel like you're self targeting me. my dad. Fascinating. And she points up into the sky, and she goes, that, that is your father. And she points up and he goes, the, the sky, the, the sky is my father? She goes, no, the sun. You are the son of the sun. So the next time those bullies make fun of you, you simply point up in the sky and go, that's my father. And he goes, mom, you're an idiot. That's not going to work. Because if I do that to the bullies, they're just gonna beat me up even more. I can't go to there like, hey, Bobby the bully, that's my daddy, because that's not going to work. She goes, oh, well, that's the best I can do for you. So he comes up with his own plan. He goes, what I'm going to do is run away and find my father. I'm going to track down Helios, confront Helios, and find out if my mom is lying to me or not, and see if he really is my father. So as a teenager, he runs away from home and starts trying to track down the mountain where he sees the sun leave from every morning. Months go by, and every day he gets closer and closer to the mountain, till one day he gets to the base of it, and he sees the sun take off. And he's like, this is the mountain. Spends the next several days climbing up to this very tippy top. And early one morning, before the sun leaves, he gets up to the giant palace that's on the top. Whew, takes his breath, steps up to the giant doors, and he's like, all right, I'm going to confront Helios and find out. Because for all he knows, his mom was lying to him, and he's about to get killed. But he has faith. So he throws open the doors and steps in and goes, my name is Phaethon, and you are Helios, and ah! And he can't see anything, because there's this big blinding light that's coming from in front of him. He drops to his knees, he's like, I'm blind! And all of a sudden, this deep, rumbly voice starts to speak right as the brightness goes away. And he hears this rumbly voice say, My name is Helios. I am the sun god. Allow me to remove my helm. And he pulls off his helmet, puts it behind the throne, and all of a sudden, Phaethon can see. And he keeps blinking, and he looks up and sees this gigantic man sitting on the throne. And Helios looks down at him and goes, Phaethon! He reaches out his hand and goes, I am your father! And reaches out his hand to him, and Phaethon gets all excited and runs up to him and gives him a hug, and they give little pats on the back, and he goes, I have been watching over you every single day as I have been driving the sun chariot across the sky. When I got promoted, I had to take this job, and I could not be with you, and I was robbed from you. Faith and goes, did you ever get that milk? And he goes, I did, but it's spoiled because I'm the sun god and it cooked. 
and it turned into vapor. So I apologize. And he goes, that's okay. And he goes, you know what? I feel bad that I've missed all of your birthdays and Christmases, even though Jesus hasn't been born yet. But someday he will be, and I'll miss those too. So he goes, because of that, what I want to do is make it up to you. I am going to give you a present that is all of your birthdays combined into one. Yeah. And Faith is like, whoa, 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 what is it? He goes, what I'm going to give you is one wish. Whatever you want, I will make your wish come true. Well, if it is within my power, I swear on the river sticks that I shall make this wish come true for you. Phaethon is excited. He's like, oh, yeah, yeah. And he's like, not a problem. He's like, okay, this is the best thing ever. He's like, all right, what do I want? He's like, well, I want to make the bully suffer because I hate those bullies that punish me every day and they made my life miserable, so let's do that. He goes, I can have my dad come down there and beat them up. That'd be fun. Uh, or he can give them a bunch of wedgies. That'd be fun also. He's like, oh, wait. No. Better than beating up bullies is embarrassing them and proving to them that you are my father and I am way cooler than they ever would be. So he comes up with what he wants to do. He goes, Dad, I know what I want. And the other goes, what do you want, son? He goes, I want your car. And what was Helios' oh. car? The sun chariot. The sun chariot. Oh. He goes, I want your sun chariot. And then I can show off to those bullies and prove to them you're my dad. And Helios goes, no. He goes, what? He goes, well, it's not my car. I, I can't give it to you because it's not mine. It actually belongs to the gods. It's, it's the sun. So that's not a thing I can do. So you're going to have to pick again. Faith is like, oh, okay. Okay, I got it. I'm not going to take your car. I want to drive your car for one day, and then I can drive across the sky, go down to the bullies, pull up in the school playground, jump out and go, nah, 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 brrr, jump back in the car, brrr, peel out, and make fun of them, and they can never make fun of me again. And Helios goes, no. He goes, what? He goes, no. Um, because... These are gigantic god horses. You're a child. I'm a god. You're a half god. You will die. And faith and goes, man, 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 man. You're an adult. All I hear is you going, bat, 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 bat. And you have no choice. And why does Helios have no choice? Swore on the river sticks. Swore on the river sticks. So the more Helios tries to talk him out of it, it's like, you don't understand. This is a death sentence. There are monsters up there in the sky. Faith and just goes, blah, 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 adult, blah, blah, adult, blah, blah. I have a solution. And Helios goes, what? And he goes, this. And he runs out into the garage, jumps in the car, and goes, yeah! And takes off and shoots out into the sky. And Helios is like, no, you've got to die! And out he goes. Faith is excited. He's feeling out. And it goes off into the sky, and his dad's running behind him, and the horse is like, giddy up, giddy up, giddy up. And it shoots straight up, and he's fine. Turns out, him being half God, he was able to control it as he goes up. And it was the best thing ever, and his hair was whipping back in the wind, and the horses are running through the air, and he can look at them, he can actually see the bullies down there in the playground. And he was like, oh, it is on! And he is going to torment them. Problem is, he's starting way back in Africa, because that's where this mountain was. And as he goes up right, across right. Africa, trying to get to where the bullies are, the first monster jumps out from behind a cloud, and it's a giant scorpion with a big clackety-clackety. It's like, clackety-clackety-clackety! And Phaethon freaks out. He was like, I made a poor choice! And lets go of the reins, covers his eyes, and curls into a ball. And he's like, I don't want to die, I don't want to die, I don't want to die! And now that the horses are no longer being controlled, they don't want to go near Big Scary Monster either. So they go straight down, away from Big Scary Monsters, which leads them straight down to the ground. And the burning chariot ends up hitting Africa in the middle and bounces across the ground multiple times. As it goes across Africa, it changes the landscape forever. Because what does it create? Mountains, the, desert. The, desert. the Sahara Desert burns off everything down there, creating the Sahara Desert as it bounces across. Not only that, 
but according to the Greeks, it forever changes mankind. And because of what humans were made out of, any humans that were close to that contact point, it darkened their skin. And the farther you got away from that contact point, the less damage it did to the skin and darkened it. Because the Greeks saw everybody as the same person. It was just the fact that you had darker skin from this. But so that was how they explained it. But for Zeus, he freaks out when he sees the world burning and the cart going across it. Why does he freak out? Because of the prophecy. The prophecy says the world's going to burn in fire. And he's like, oh no, what's happening? He's like, ah, oh, it was a half human. So Zeus decides to solve this problem in classic Zeus fashion. How Zeus solve problems? Killing teenagers. Killing teenagers is the best way to solve most problems. So that's what he does. He picks up his lightning bolt, points out there and sees where he's going across and uh, tests the wind. And he was like, problem solved! And throws it. And, yeah, boom! Hits Phaethon in midair. The car explodes. Phaethon dies instantly. But his body falls straight down and ends up landing in a river in Africa. His family ends up tracking down his body, and in honor of him, they name the river after him. And to this day, there is a river in Africa named after Phaethon, which tracks all the way back to the story, and it is thought that that is where his body lay. For real? Mm -hmm. The moral of the story is, if you don't listen to your parents, what will happen? You're gonna You're gonna you die. will die. Yeah. Great story. Now, because I don't want to make boys feel bad, let's learn about a girl who makes yeah. a poor choice. Because it's not always boys who are big dum dums. Sometimes girls get to be dum dums too. And we're gonna get to the story of not positive. I'm a boy also. And we're gonna get to the story of Arachne. Now, for this one, we have to know who the god of weaving was. The god of weaving is? Athena. Athena. The one right over here, this would be Athena. She was the god of war, the god of wisdom, and the god of weaving. And also, if you weren't sure, uh, weaving is not like what your grandma does on the couch with crochet. Weaving involved this thing called a loom, which is this giant wooden machine. You'd have like these things that go back and forth. They used it medieval times. They did. Or, if you've been to this place called Connor Prairie, that's where I've seen them. And so there's this big wooden machine, and it goes back and forth. They don't use them to make um, clothing. They were used to make these things called tapestries, which is a way of creating pictures with strings. And tapestries are coming back, because both of my teenage kids have tapestries hanging up in their rooms, which are like these giant pictures that hang up up there. If you've never seen a tapestry, it looks something like this. It's a giant picture made out of string. All right, so our story of Arachne and Athena. Arachne was a teenage girl, and she was an expert weaver, was one of the best that ever existed, was really good at it, to the point where she would actually bring her loom out into the middle of town and set it up and go out there and do her weaving so everybody in town could watch. And people would. They would come out and spectate and watch her. They had like Arachne jerseys they would put on. And they were like, I'm a fan. I've got your weaving cards. Because they didn't have baseball cards back then. And they had a, people that thought she was really, really cool. So one day, she's out there weaving. People are cheering her on, saying how great it is. When one of the people was like, you know what? I think you're so good. I bet you were trained by the gods themselves. I don't think there's anyone better than you than probably the god of weaving herself. That's the only person that's better than you. Did, were you trained by Athena? And instead of taking it as a compliment, Arachne takes it as an insult and gets angry. She goes, whoa, whoa, whoa. You watch yourself. Are you trying to imply that I didn't learn to do this myself? Are you trying to say that a god gave me this gift? Uh-uh. No God gave me this gift. I gave me this gift through hard work. In fact, not only did a God not give me this gift, I'm better than the gods. I'm better than the God of weaving. You know why? Because I just said I'm better than the God of weaving. In fact, if I'm not better than the God of weaving, let Athena herself show up and challenge me. She's not here. 
Exactly. So that means one of two things. Either one, the gods don't exist, or two, I'm better than her, and she's scared. And people in the crowd are like, no, you don't want to. That's not a good, shh, don't keep it on. And she's like, no. And so she spends the next week telling everybody this whole thing. And the rumors start to spread. And everyone's like, she must be the best one because no one's ever challenged her. The next weekend, she has an even bigger crowd because these rumors have spread everywhere. And she's out there weaving and there's just people all around. They're like, she really is the best. And they're all out there selling her Arachne jerseys. When an old lady walks up from the crowd to her and goes, I've been hearing you talk about the fact that you're better than the gods. I don't think that's a smart thing to do, young lady. Maybe the gods are being patient and forgiving. Maybe if you apologize to the gods, they won't feel a need to punish you. And Arachne looks at the old lady and goes, maybe, old lady, you should shut your face because you don't know what you're talking about. Because I, I have not seen a god show up here this entire time I've been saying it, so why don't you get to step in? And all of a sudden, nah, the old lady speak. goes, game on, and reaches down, grabs her skin, and, goes, and rips off her entire skin, throws it to the side, and underneath of it is... Athena. Athena. Now, she doesn't go full... But when you see someone rip off their entire skin and throw it to the side and go from old lady to young lady, you're like, yeah, that's probably a god. Oh, uh, there's not, you're like, can I see your ID? And all the people are like, oh, it's her. And she goes, all right, listen, I know you're young. Sometimes young people be kind of stupid. Obviously, you're looking at me now. I'm a god. So I'm a forgiving, loving god. Why don't you apologize? And then we can move on from this. And all the people in the background in the crowd are like, oh, look at that! Who's getting shown up now? And they're all like trash talking Arachne. And Arachne's looking at him and she realized that she just now embarrassed herself. She's like, I can never show my face again because now I'm getting embarrassed in front of this god. So Arachne doubles down. And she goes, No, I'm not going to apologize. And the reason I'm not going to apologize is I'm better than you. How about instead of apologizing, why don't we have a weave-off? And we'll see who's better. And whoever is better at the end of the weave-off, they get to become god of weaving. And if it's you, you get to be god of weaving, and you can do whatever you want. But if, when I win, I become god of weaving, how about that? And Arachne, the theme is like, oh, you did not. And Arachne's like, oh, woman, yeah, I did. And it was like, oh, game on weave off and all of a sudden people come running up from behind they're like it's a wave off and athena pulls out her own looms and like, boom and throws it down and they're like all right let's get the game started and everyone starts pulling on like their athena jerseys or their arachne jerseys and they're all cheering in the background they're like it's a weave off we've not had these in years and they get all excited and athena goes all right here are the rules of this particular weave off we are going to create a picture of the gods since you're challenging the gods we are going to have a competition to see who can come up with the best picture of the gods. And then we are going to let the crowd decide who is better. Does that work? And Arachne's like, yeah, that's fine. I can do that. Whatever. I'm going to beat you. It's fine. And her friends are behind her going, we got your back. You've got this. She's like, okay. And so they begin, and they both start weaving, doing the whole waka, 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 back and forth. Like, stress, sweat is coming down the front of their face. It's dripping on to like that. And they're doing like the death stares at each other the entire time. So Athena... In her picture, as she's going across, she starts putting all these pictures of the gods doing like great things, like Prometheus creating the first race of mankind, uh, Poseidon, who had found this island that was drowning and didn't have water, he brings them fresh water, one of Athena herself bringing the almond or the olive tree to Athens. And so it's like all these different pictures of the gods doing great things. And she's like, that girl doesn't even know what she's in for. And she starts looking over at Arachnes as she's going. And she realizes when she looks at Arachne's, Arachne's pictures go a whole different direction than hers. The first thing she knows in Arachne's pictures is it's a picture of Zeus at a pond flirting with a swan. And there's like a giant snake in the background. And then there's another one about a girl disappearing and a baby falling down. And then there's another one about a baby getting thrown through the air from the top of Mount... And she realizes all of the pictures in Arachne's are the gods being dumb. 
the gods being insulted. And she realizes that not only is this girl making pictures insulting to the gods, it's better than hers. Arachne is better at it than she is. And Athena sees that and snaps. She cannot believe this human has the gall to do something where she has insulting pictures and is better. And she picks up her loom, goes over to where Arachne is, kicks her loom out of the way, and starts beating her with her giant wooden loom in front of the crowd. And is just yelling at her, like, smash, what is wrong with you? And the loom is falling apart, and there's pieces flying to the side, and Arachne's like, twitchy, twitchy, and she keeps beating her until Arachne is laying on the ground. And as Athena's beating her and sweat's flying off, and she has that moment mid-smashing when she's like, oh, and the whole crowd's looking at her, and she's like, oh, oh, and she puts down, she has that embarrassing moment when you're beating a teenager with a giant wooden loom in front of a crowd, and they're all staring at you, and you're like, <laughs> oops, and she puts it down, and she goes over to look at the crowd, she's like, um, Hey, <laughs> kind of lost it there. <laughs> a little bit of a temper issue. <laughs> I apologize. Probably shouldn't beat a teenager. Uh, you know how it is. And she continues to talk and apologize to the crowd. And they're just like, eyes are huge and staring at her. She's like, I know. All right. So listen. But as she talks to the crowd and explains her point of view, she watches their eyes going from her to behind her. And they keep going her, behind her, her, behind her. She's like, I know, I apologize, I beat the girl, I'll apologize to her. And the crowd's like, mm -hmm. they start waving their hands, like they're like, they're pointing, and she's like, I know, I beat. Well, it turns out what the crowd was trying to tell her is Arachne was so embarrassed by getting beat down by a god in front of everyone there, she couldn't handle the embarrassment. So she ended up taking all of the thread and string from her loom, wrapping it around her own neck, and went up into the tree and hung herself right behind Athena. And Athena was like, what are you guys all about? And she turns around and sees the girl hanging in the tree, and she's like, whoa, okay, that was not what I had planned at all. And she's like, okay, um, um, I apologize, let me fix this. So she goes over to Iraq and she's like, listen, okay, you insulted the gods, and for that, um, I can't just let you go, but you don't die today, because you are better than me at weaving, and I have to respect that. So you are not going to die today. But I can't have you making fun of the gods. So because of that, you will never get a chance to make fun of the gods again, nor will your children ever make fun of the gods again. But you will get to weave forever and ever. And your children will get to weave forever and ever. To do this, she changes Arachne from a human into a, spider. a spider. And this is how she creates the first spider. This is why spiders are so good at weaving, was because the first one beat Athena in a contest. And to honor that to this day, the scientific name for a spider is arachnid. an arachnid, which goes all the way back to the story of arachnid getting created from all of this. And the good news is, we finished it, so I don't have to give you guys reading homework. So yay! The other good news is, we have time to make you guys stand up and get points, but not you guys at home. We're going to pass it for you guys.